Okay, so I'm starting to document the process of getting ready to move the container. There's my buddy Trey. Trey and I went to tandem school together. We were skydivers. He was a skydiver before me. And uh, he bounced before me. Yeah, you bounced before me. Yeah, yeah he bounced. No, you bounced after me. After Yeah, you bounced. He bounced harder than me. I bounced twice. Oh, yeah, he bounced twice. I skipped. He got metal. I got no metal. Okay, so here we are. We're here at the house and we're getting ready to move the container. Now, for those of y'all that don't know all the supernatural stuff, I'm sorry. I can't go over it, but there's all the documentation for those of y'all that have been watching this ministry. How many miracles have you seen regarding these shipping containers? How many times has the Lord proven that what went on the walls as the artwork? How many times has he proven that? What he told me to put on it was exactly correct. And I want to I want to draw attention to the most what I believe is the most significant thing on the wall. Well, behind me over here, behind me right here on this wall right here, there are two sperm coming into a system. There is a dimension right there. See my hand like it's going into that dimension. And then then it comes out over here. The dimension comes out over here. And there's two twin. There's a set of twins, and one has horns like a devil. There's one right side up, and there's one upside down. That's what the Lord told me to put on these walls. Okay, a lot of people might be going, "Oh, really?" I documented everything as I did. Then the Lord told me, "I want you to put an empty tomb on the wall." You see, right behind me, over my head, see the coffin shape. Well, I have one. See how it looks like it goes deep into the ground? Look at that angle right there. See the depth? How it looks like an empty tomb. So anyway, when the Lord told me that, I said, well, how am I going to make it look like an empty tomb? Well, for those of y'all that watch my videos, you remember that the uh, my coffin parachute rack hangs up on the wall behind me during the videos. That used to be my parachute rack, and I'd hang one parachute on one arm, one parachute on the other arm. You know, they're backpacks. So anyway, when I said, Lord, how am I going to how am I going to do that? How am I going to make it look like an empty tomb? And all of a sudden, my head went, Rang. and I was looking right at that coffin that hangs on the wall where I sit and do the video. And so, and then I heard the Lord tell me, take the coffin off the wall, go lay it down on the metal in the driveway. So this whole metal wall was laying just flat on the ground. And so he said, lay it down and then go around it concentrically like you would the circles, like you did your dimensions. See, look how dimensional that is. It looks like you can dive right into it. And so he told me, do the same thing, but just go around in a coffin shape for an empty tomb. I said, okay. And so I did what he said, and there it is. There's the result. And then he told me, and then on the last wall, I want you to put the three crosses of Calvary with me in the middle. And there's Christ crucified in the middle, and the two becoming one, and the two rivers of blood all coming together with one in Christ. And he told me, you'll make the floor blood red. And so I did everything he said. And now a lot of people are like, oh, really? God speaks to you like that? Yes. 
the night I got saved, even the, the angel that met me told me, Jonathan, that little voice you hear now speaking to you, that's God speaking to you. Learn to trust his voice. So I've been put to the test for years. So after I did this whole thing, <clears throat> unlike the first container, the first container, everything I put on every wall, as soon as I would do it, he would confirm that it was correct. And so I knew that I had gotten the wall right because he would show me some supernatural confirmation every time I would post it on YouTube as it happened. So on this one, though, I was like, okay, Lord, I did the whole container. I've got the floors done. I got the walls done. I got the twin system done. I have the empty tomb done. And then I have the crosses of Calvary right there behind me. I have the three crosses of Calvary. And I have the judgment seat. You told me to put a white lambskin there when, when you gave me those air, airline chairs. You told me to put this chair out here. And you told me to put the Bible here on this table that's also the same as the floor, blood. And I said, I, I've done everything you asked. But you know what's really weird is I haven't gotten a confirmation at all. So I'm kind of freaked out because I've really done a lot of stuff and I don't know what to think. So I went down to the alley where I got saved. I went and sat there and I, I went Sunday morning and I sat there and I prayed and I said, Lord, I, I need a confirmation. I need to know that I did it right. I mean, I've got this other container. What am I supposed to do? Just let it sit in the backyard of my house. There's a house behind me. Is, is, that, is that what's up? I had no idea. And so I went down to the alley and I was praying there and I, I heard absolutely nothing. And I was a little bit, you know, I'm just going to be honest. I was like, I was a little bit snarky. I was like, uh, you know, I came all the way down to the alley. I'm sitting here praying. You're not talking to me. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and so it was early Sunday morning. And so when I didn't hear anything, I thought, well, you know what? I, I'm trying to get out light a little bit. There we go. That's better. When I didn't hear anything, I, I just said, well, you know what? I'm just going to go home then. And so I started driving down Broadway from the St. Anthony. And as I started driving down Broadway, I got to a street called Josephine. And normally I would take a left and jump right on the highway and head home because it's a very quick trip home. But because it was Sunday morning, I just continued my drive. I just continued to drive down Broadway. And as I continued my drive, there was no cars on the street. There was hardly anyone. And I got right in front of Incarnate Word College on Broadway. And right in the middle of the road, it looked like a, a dove had been hit and the wings were all sticking up in the air. And I, and I saw it and I'm driving in my truck straight in the middle lane. You know, there's, th there's three lanes, I believe, right there in both directions. And I, it was right in front of me. So I was, was going to go right under the middle of my truck. And as I got closer, I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's not a dove, that's like a book. And this is what was sticking up in the air like this, like it looked like a bird hit on the ground. And then I saw it was a book and I heard the Lord say, go pick it up. Well, now I've already run over the book. It went under my truck and I'm looking in my rear view mirror and the book's back here behind me in my rear view mirror in the middle of the street. And I hear the Lord say, go pick it up. And I said out loud, I said, Lord, if I go pick up that book and there's nothing in it, I am going to freak out and my faith is just going to be destroyed. And I heard the Lord say, go pick it up. So I did. I turned around and I went and I parked my car at FedEx and, and I got out and I, I got on my phone and I videotaped it. I walked out and I picked up this book in the middle of the road. Hang on. Try that computer where I sit, where the airplane seats are, there's a little book right like that, right to the right of the computer. Would you bring it out? Yep. So anyway, that was Sunday morning. I walked down in the street, and you can see the tire tracks on this thing. And this is what was in the middle of the road after I prayed in that alley. Lord, I did everything you asked me to do in, in this container. I did the twin system. I did the empty tomb. I did the three crosses of Calvary. I put Romans 6.23, the, the gift of God is eternal life. And then you turn that sign upside down and it says the wages of sin is death. So it says death right there. The, way, the wage of sin is death. But when you turn that sign upside down, then it says 
the free gift of God is eternal life. So it depends on which way you look at this, it's life or death. You turn it one way, it says life. You flip it upside down, it's death. Well, isn't that perfect? So anyway, so when I picked this book up, I had just left the alley where I got saved. So I was just coming home from the alley. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is where, you know, this is where I got saved and God's not even talking to me. But then on the way home, I literally drove right over this book. Look what it says. It says the empty tomb. What's what's right behind me on the wall? What's that right behind me? He told me put an empty tomb on this wall. There's an empty tomb. There's a book that says empty tomb. You're looking at it. I was in complete and utter shock. I was standing on the side of the room going, oh my Lord. Well, look at the look at the tomb. Look at the book right here. Let's see. See how it's just light coming out? I was like, that is crazy. Well, on this piece of art right here, I just shine a light straight in the middle and it looks just like this. I was just like, I was flabbergasted. I was like, oh my gosh. Hang on one sec. Trey, hold the camera. It's going to be way better for you guys. So anyways, can you imagine if you're me and you just went down to the alley to pray? Did I get the container right? You don't hear from the Lord, but on the way home, you run over this book. It says the empty tomb. And right there is an empty tomb, and he told me to put an empty tomb. Okay, now, think about this. I opened this book up, and you know what, I'll get a little further away so you don't have to lean your head so Okay, like thank you. There you go. So then I open this book up, and as I start looking through this book, I'm like, oh my Lord, it's got Romans 6.23, the gift of God is eternal life. It says the wages of sin is death in here. Oh my gosh. Now, this little book also has this and that inside this little book and i'm thinking wow i just left the alley lord did i get the container right did i get the artwork right so now i got romans 6 23 the wages of sin and death the gift of god is eternal life and i have an empty tomb so now i got two things in this book that are in the middle of broadway then right here i have the judgment seat of christ and on the back when i get to the back page it says someday you will sure you will bow before God and it's the judgment seat of Christ. After leaving the alley, this was in the middle of the road. I ran over it coming home. Well, that was Sunday morning. Monday, I went to my P.O. box. Look what was in my P.O. box. Look what was in my P.O. box. The exact same Bible track book. One in the middle of the road on Sunday morning. And one in my P.O. box on Monday morning. I'm sorry? Confirmation. Oh, this is, it doesn't get any bigger confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, Trey's over there. The goosebumps. The, Trey's <laughs> uh, now I'm getting the goosebumps and I, <gasps> I'm buzzing, guys. Yeah. So there's your confirmation. Did I get it right? Trey looks like a plucked chicken. <laughs> Trey looks like it's a good thing. He looks like a plucked chicken. It's He's got Colonel eggs, Sanders time. thighs. So yeah. So anyway, so there it is. So here it is. We're getting it ready for transport. This thing's on its way to Grand Junction pretty soon. But we're not ready for the party yet. We'll let everybody know. But this has to get there first. So we're just going to document this now. And I'll get back to y'all later. Tick tock, tick tock. Trey and I'd be jumping, but we have these winds coming from cross directions, so your parachute can deflate and reinflate. So you're not guaranteed a landing that's safe. If it was high, steady winds, no problem. If it was no winds, no problem. Cross, choppy winds, big problem. So it's Father's Day, so I want to wish everybody Happy Father's Day. But I want y'all to know that everything that's been required to get all this done is being done. And I'm out here doing what I was told to do. All right, guys. Well, happy Father's Day and peace and grace. And I'm going to back up. See y'all later. Peace. And we'll catch you when we see you. Okay, so this is it. This is transport day. We got the train right here. We got the, uh, the conic box. We have the converted box. Where I'm going to go over here and I'm going to get that crane number real quick. Crane 3140. Uh, it says 3140 pounds. And then let's see. 
I like to just document stuff, you know what I mean? It's just kind of fun. There you go. There they are. We're getting ready to do it. Oh yeah. All right. This is it. We've got Trey over here helping me out. There's the box back there. We're getting ready to do this. All right, three fifty four. Okay, so here's the perfection of the Lord God. So he told me, look at the crane number. It's three fifty four. Here's three fifty four. It means a taking up, a lifting up, ascension. Right there, ascension, a taking up. 354 that's the number of the crane outside in, in the strongs could the lord really be in control of the number of the crane absolutely <laughs> what's up that cat a uh, taking a wow all right here we go just documenting some more there's jason brown trucking again the crane number over there, that's got my mind blown. I heard the Lord say, look at the number on the truck, it's important. It means to ascend, 354. And then 3480, I believe. Or 3140, it means to give a testimony. Look at this. This is unbelievable. 354, to ascend, to raise up. 3140 means to give a testimony. You can't even think this stuff up. So they're getting ready to pull it. It's going to Grand Junction, and then when it's time for the party, I'll let y'all know. So again, I'm just documenting. We're just setting up. We're getting ready for the pull. There's, there it is. There's there's Chris, there's Trey. We're getting ready for it. It's getting ready to go, guys. There you go. That's insane. That is completely mind-boggling. 35, 354, to lift up, to ascend, to give a testimony. That is so amazing. All glory to God. Look at that, unbelievable. Okay, so 354 right there, I just showed you. It means to ascend, to lift up. What's going on right here? Well, gee, there's a crane right here. So it means to, in the strongest importance in the Bible, 354 means to lift up. Well, guess what? You wanna see something even crazier? Watch this. Check this big boy out. You see that 3140? You know what that means? to give a testimony <laughs> you can't even make this stuff up so 354 to lift up to ascend 3140 to give a testimony that's the number 3140 in the bible this has all been orchestrated guys Yeehaw! all right god bless okay just documenting 389 could it be possible that it actually is significant that, that would blow my mind even more but there it is. There it is going up. We're getting ready for it, guys. I mean, my mind is already <laughs> completely and utterly blown. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch y'all in a bit. We're getting ready to disconnect the spiral stairway. Looks like DNA going all the way down. So that's getting disconnected. We're here hooking it all up. We're getting this whole thing hooked up. We got the crane ready. We got the guys are getting ready to drop it. He's got it. There it is. There's a crane all the way out to the street. It's one heck of a pull. There's the bottom of the house. I remember when Billy Lojack was here helping me do this. You remember that, Billy? <laughs> Y'all remember all the stuff that went into these two things? Here we go. There it is all the way up getting pulled. 
Okay, that thing's been pulled. The blue rope that went to the serpent is down. The red rope's down. There it goes. It just got pulled. And there it goes. There's a stairway going to nowhere. Look at that. There's a DNA spiral staircase. Looks like a serpent DNA going to nowhere. And there it goes. There it goes. Looks good. All right. Looks great. Nice pull. Perfect. Now, so there it is. Hey, it's all good. We got it. It's a done deal. To give a testimony to a sin permanence. Can't even think this stuff up. <laughs> so there it goes. Documenting the whole thing. Off it goes. There's Chris, Christopher, taking it out, making the corner. Lord, bless that thing on the way out. Keep it safe. There it is. The job has been begun. <laughs> I was going to say completed, but we're still working on it. Thing's still got to make it. Made the corner. There you go. It's on its way. There it goes, the shipping container off to Colorado. We'll give you guys a heads up on the date. I would say, I'm sure within a month we'll have our party. All right. Okay, so just a quick check-in. So now, the container's loaded. It was pulled out, sent on a truck, and I'm on my way to Grand Junction to meet the container and set it into place where its final resting place will be. And um, then I will get together with everybody and let everybody know what the dates are going to be. That if anybody wants to come out and see the containers together and um, just fellowship with like-minded people and see what happens and I'm gonna jump my canopy that I was told to jump Michael's gonna do a tandem which he was told to do and we're gonna just see where it all goes sounds like that. all right just getting ready to head to Grand Junction you know, I'm just documenting. I'm here in Grand Junction. We just walked to the LZ, which is over behind those houses. It's a big open field, but what's really interesting is this street right behind me. Let's see. Y'all see that glory view? <laughs> Who knows? It's like, I don't know what's going to happen, folks, but I'll tell you what, it sure is getting weird. It's so crazy. Glory view. The LZ is that way. <laughs> <laughs> so if you went straight down Glory View, which is a dead end, and you kept going straight, you would run into the LZ. All right, here we go. Okay, it's Thursday morning. Uh, there we are at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir, again, which means proclamation of peace and to take the glory from another king in battle. And here we are at the corner. There's the first container that represents the Bride of Christ. It had Revelation 3.10 on the side, but the city was said we had to remove that. Revelation 3.10. Here is the second container represents the judgment seat of Christ. It says Isaiah 1.18. Let us reason together. Let your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as well. There it is. There's the container. There's a transport. There's a lot that's gone into this, folks. I'm breathing pretty hard because we had a table we had to move that's made out of a tree called Heavenwood with a crystal with a crystal stream down the middle. Anyway, so here we are behind me over there. That's going to be the LZ, the landing zone, and right above us, up there, that's going to be where a big 
Well, not a big parachute. I actually have a very small parachute, but it's going to say V for vengeance right above these two containers in the sky. And we're going to give you guys the dates. We're almost ready. All glory to God. <laughs> guys, this is so surreal for me. I mean, on a personal level, I just want to talk to you personally. This is hard to imagine that at one five four one means Shema O Israel for the Lord your God is one. He told me to look up the meaning of the number one. It means Shema O Israel for the Lord your God is one. Then the Lord told me to type in meaning of 54 in the Bible. Not Strong's. I typed in Bible meaning of 54 and it brought up Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54 says as it was with my servant Noah so so shall it be with you as I made a covenant uh, with my servant Noah which was a rainbow which was a rainbow as it was with my servant Noah so shall it be with you I'll make a covenant of e a covenant of everlasting peace that's Isaiah 54 this address is 154 and the Lord told me to look it up it literally says this is as it was with my servant Noah, as I made a covenant with him, which was a rainbow, so shall I make a covenant with you of everlasting peace. See Casimir? Casimir means proclamation of peace. This is so incredibly unbelievable that a human mind has trouble processing this because that means, think of the control that went into this whole thing from the beginning. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? When you're looking at these two containers are coming together. There it is. So my work here has been done. I have a couple things left to do, but God's will, I'll get them done. So anyway, checking in. We're getting ready for the get together, folks. Just giving you a heads up. So I'll be announcing it very soon. All right, guys, God bless. Again, covenant, rainbow, covenant of peace. Amen. And here it comes. There's the crane showing up. All right. There's the crane showing up. Those guys are going to pick that thing up. And they're going to set it right next to the other one. There we go. Just going to do a little documentation here. There's Michael. And there we go. There you go. Now, before I even look this up, everything's been so crazy. This crane's gonna have a number on it too. And it's what, 4274. Crane number, 4274. There you go. All right. Michael and I were here at the, the dropping or the placing of the, the other container and I told you I, before we did anything, before we looked up the number on that crane, I heard the Lord say document it. So I took a step of faith in the video I just made before this, I said I hear the Lord saying document the number on the crane and look it up. Yep, I heard the exact same thing. And and so I was doing it, Johnny was videotaping. So we're videotaping this crane, we're like, there's a number on the crane, that's just almost absurd. But that's what happened in San Antonio as well, as you already saw in this video. So, the, the, the crane goes by and I see the number, it's 4274. I'm gonna let Michael tell you what that means. It's used one time in scripture. Yep, so it means forerunner. Okay, a forerunner. A, that means one that goes ahead. Yeah, figuratively a precursor. And then its root is to run forward. That is outstrip, proceed, outrun, and run before. And it's and, Jesus in Hebrews. And, yep, and, or in Greek. Greek 42, yeah, 74. Yeah, but I mean in the book of Hebrews. Yes, in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, it's he is the forerunner. He's the one that went before us. Yep. <laughs> I am so I am love my whole body's <laughs> buzzing like the night I got saved. I'm just like this is yeah, yeah. and then uh, advance guard going in advance of running forward. 
an advanced guard running in advance, going to the four. So he was our precursor. He's the one that went before us. Yep. Dude, this is crazy. And the only time it's used in scriptures is Hebrew chapter 6, verse 20. Much love, family. <laughs> yeah, here we go. We're getting ready for the event, folks. We're getting it all put in place. Oh, this is going to happen. All right, guys, God bless. Okay, so they've got the boom out all the way. Well, as far as they need it, pretty much. They're going to drop it down. He's going to hook it up. We're going to set that thing over the fence. Now, here's the other thing. I know this is hard to believe because I have trouble wrapping my mind around all this. That the numbers on a crane could be that significant. I mean, I saw it in San Antonio and I thought, this is insane. It means to give a witness and was one and heck, y'all already saw the video. I can't remember because so much stuff's gone through my head. But uh, the numbers on the crane were so significant. It was crazy. And the Lord said, look these up. 4274, it means a precursor, like forerunner. And then 340 literally means judgment. It's unbelievable. It's just like my head's spinning. I'm almost can't, I almost can't process what's going on here because this is, you know, this is the king orchestrating what he's doing. And we just get to participate in his grand production. So anyway, there it is. We're getting ready for the get together. Okay, guys, God bless. Okay, just documenting all this. Here we go. They're getting that thing, not getting some tension on those lines. It's coming down. There it is. We're gonna get that get the tension on it. Looks like we're ready for a pull. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. We have the we have the box off the bed. He's guiding it. And there we go. Lift off, and all my electrical looks good underneath. All my hard part, hard fought work to make this thing light up. All right, they're pulling it. This is it, guys. Oh yes, we got it. The boom's not out too far, which is nice because. Uh, the, the less far it's out, the more stable that crane is going to be. It looks good. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. Michael, let's get ready, buddy. It's it's here. There we go. Hey, we're going to need you on the back of the container. Okay. Looking good. Michael, you're going to get towards the back of the container. I just want to get it. You're going to keep that tail swing from going over once he gets it down low. Do you want me to move that table? Looking good. It's coming right over the top of the other one. There it is, looking real good. This kid's got it going on. This young man's got his operation skills down. Yep, looking real good, hovering right on top of it. Going to start extending the boom a little bit. There you go. We're going to push that boom out. We're going to clear it. goes. Look at that. Perfect. 
looking real good. Looking good. There it goes. I'm just going to get this. Hey Michael, move the two by six out of the way a little bit so he can use that. Get it off the pad completely. That way we can use that area. This is so exciting for me. <laughs> man's got it going on. It's yeah. looking really good. Gonna clear that other container and then just start pinching it down. Once we clear that container it'll be a lot easier. Alright. I'm gonna go help on the other side at this point. I am buzzing so hard it's insane right now. I mean, I'm just lit up. Look at this. There it is! Michael! Chris! There they are, side by side. <laughs> yeah! 444, 344. Impossible. Rainbow Casimir. We're on it. We did it. Got through the city, got through everything. It was an impossible thing, but we made it through it all. We got two cranes side by side. I mean, two cranes. We got two containers side by side. There they are. That's a perfect set. Those things are wide open. Just perfect. That is just unbelievable. Just one more time, just to memorialize it. There it is. We're unhooking it the corner of Rainbow and Casimir and there's our LZ out in the valley. You can't make this stuff up. There you go. Wow. Both containers are in place. There it is. Here's container one, number one, tidal wave coming over. The Statue of Liberty, Jeremiah 51:42. The waves have come up over Babylon. There's going to be a chest set there and the hourglass. A table set that turns into a rainbow with the Lord's Prayer on it. And then that wall is fire. There's the tree of life. The other, the other one is like a vortex with the heartbeat of life going through it. And there's one. And then here's the other one. There's a twin system beginning. There's a sperm coming into the system. There's another one going into that vortex. Coming out the other side. Coming out the other side of the vortex right here. See, it comes out right there. This is amazing. Look at this. Look how 3D it is. So it goes in the two sperm there and there. Goes into the vortex. Comes out the vortex right there. There's a set of twins. One's got horns like the devil. One's right side up, one's upside down. And then over here is the empty tomb. There's a grave that's empty. And there's the three crosses of Calvary. And the transport is complete. And I have almost accomplished my work of faith for the Lord God. Amen. Okay, so now I'm coming out to where the LZ is. The, uh, the house and the containers are well up there and over here is going to be our LZ. <clears throat> and so Michael and I are getting it ready and I'm just documenting it. A little bit of a hike. Uh, we've already picked out our LZ and so we'll get it done. All right.
Okay, so this is gonna be our LZ. Here we go. There it is. And we have V engines with little right side up, upside down A's over the E. You'll be able to see it later. There it is, there's Michael. That's where the container is, right above Michael's head, is where the container will be. Here's the, here's the whole deal. Processing this, because that means, think of the control that went into this whole thing. Lift off.